Valletta Hospital, Malta, 11th of July, 1915. Dear University High School, UHS, we steamed out of the harbour about 5 p.m. en route for the seat of war in Turkey. As we approached Gallipoli about 6 o'clock on the Tuesday, the 19th of May, after leaving Alexandria, we couldn't clearly see that there was something doing. The flash of the guns, followed by the heavy boom, gave out the impression of a continuous thunderstorm. That night we dug in, but before we had done it, three of our men were hit, one of them fatally. Three of us dug a hole about two feet deep and sufficiently long to enable us to lie down. However, it was only wide enough to allow us to lie on our sides. Before morning, we were very stiff. We dug four separate dugouts during the day and were heartily sick of the task before night. We were nicely and finally settled for the night, having returned with blistered hands and very tired bodies when we got word to prepare for the support trenches. Here we slept on a slope of about 45 degrees. We moved into the trenches themselves about 8 a.m. and relieved the troops who had been in them for a considerable time. Two days before we arrived, the Turks rushed the trenches. One trench in front of us was completely filled with their dead bodies, but I do not wish to give you harrowing details of the state of affairs. You will be able to form some idea of the number of dead lying in front when I tell you that we collected 185 rifles from dead men on half the ground between us and the Turks. It was estimated that 7,000 Turks lay dead in front of our trenches. About a week after we came into the trenches, an armistice was arranged in order that the dead might be buried. Midway between the trenches, men of either side stood with, on one side, the Red Cross flag, and on the Turks, the Red Crescent. They formed the dividing line between the two forces. I transgressed the military law, but I do not intend to tell you here the nature of my transgression. If I get back safely, I'll let you know then. Burial operations occupied the Turks until late in the afternoon. Hours of armistice, 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. As soon as it was over, a perfect hail of bullets was fired by the enemy. During my stay in the trenches, I did not shave, washed once in half a cup of water, observed and slept. The first swim in the sea after coming out was, as the girls would say, heavenly. I wallowed, regardless of shrapnel, which was bursting at the other end of the beach. Never have I had such a swim before. I remain, yours sincerely, P. Langford.